When embarking on a digital transformation of any sort of enterprise software, it's important that you fully understand what steps you need to take to make an implementation successful. So what I want to talk about in today's video are those seven steps that are critical to any implementation. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys. And one of the biggest service offerings we provide to our clients is implementation support, implementation project management. And this is a commonly misunderstood aspect of digital transformation because a lot of organizations think about just deploying technologies. And even within the realm of just deploying technologies, there's some misunderstanding of how to deploy technology. So what I want to do today is talk about those seven steps, those seven major phases that are so critical to any sort of digital transformation or enterprise software implementation. The first step in an effective enterprise software implementation is the whole software evaluation and selection process. So agnostically and objectively considering and evaluating the different technologies that are out there in the marketplace and which ones or which one ultimately will best fit your organization. Now the key thing to keep in mind here is that there's a lot of options in the market. There's hundreds of different systems out there ranging from enterprise-wide ERP systems to HR-related human capital management systems, CRM for sales teams, manufacturing execution systems, supply chain management systems, a lot of different technologies. So the key is to really understand what your priorities are as an organization, which technologies best fit, and really hone in on a short list as soon as possible that you can narrow down the field to the one or multiple technologies that are best going to solve your business problems. Now the key to an effective selection is to not only define what your business processes and requirements and priorities are, but also to evaluate those in a way that's very agnostic and not biased. And that's an area where companies that are independent, like Third Stage Consulting, can help you through that process. Once you've selected the software or multiple technologies that you might be deploying as part of your overall digital transformation, now it's important to define what your implementation plan and your strategy is. And I'm going to argue that this is the most important part of the entire process. If you don't get the implementation plan right, if you don't have the appropriate implementation strategy that's best aligned with you as an organization, you're going to run into problems. So you want to make sure that you don't just select the software, which is what I talked about previously, and just jump straight into designing and building software, which I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes. That interim step that happens between selection but before designing software is critical. And the more time and money you spend on that to a certain point, on that phase, you're going to be more successful and you're going to actually speed up and reduce the cost of your overall implementation. Now, the key to an effective business plan and one that's realistic for you as an organization is a few things. One is to make sure that you have a realistic plan from your software vendors. Oftentimes, if not most of the time, software vendors and sales reps and system integrators will give you a proposed project plan that's completely unrealistic because it looks good, it sounds good, and it's probably what you want to hear. But the reality is, is you need to be realistic about what your implementation plan is going to be. So that's the first step. Make sure you have a realistic implementation plan from your technical software providers. Secondly, you want to make sure your overall implementation plan includes everything else beyond technology and software. So things like process improvement. How long is that going to take me to improve my processes? What's my organizational change strategy? How am I going to change my people to move from point A to point B, where they are today to where they're headed in the future? That takes time and money, and that affects how long it's going to take to implement technology, and that's going to affect your overall implementation plan. You also want to look at things like data migration and solution architecture, integration between systems. Those are technical components of a transformation that oftentimes delay a project. So it's important that during the planning phase, you've identified all the problems and pitfalls that might come out so that you can address those during your overall implementation. So the key here is to make sure you have a complete, comprehensive, and realistic implementation plan before you start bringing in your software vendor and your system integrators to start building stuff. Once you have a solid implementation plan, you've mobilized resources, you have a solid strategy for how you're going to deploy technologies, now you can start thinking about the design phase of the project. And design is essentially designing the software. Now by now, by this design phase, you should have defined some of your future state business processes, ideally during the planning stage, and better yet, during the software evaluation stage. 
And I have other videos on my YouTube channel that talk about how to define business processes, how to define business requirements. So I'm not gonna get into that in a lot of detail in this video, but the key here is that you want to assume that as a prerequisite to design, you have your business processes pretty well defined in terms of what you want them to be when you grow up. Once you have that, then you can start designing the software, designing the technology, building the technology will be based on this design, but it, that design needs to be based on your business processes and your future state requirements that ultimately you would have defined prior to this phase. So design is very important because it really connects the dots between your business needs, your business requirements, what it is you're trying to accomplish as a business, and it connects that with what the software can do. And you start to get into the details of how the software is going to be built to support those business needs. The next phase of an implementation is the build phase. So now you've defined your business processes, you've designed the software, conceptually you understand, and your team understands how the software is going to be built, now you actually go to build it. So this is where oftentimes the technical resources, the outside third party technical consultants will go to work and start building the software to meet the specifications defined in your design phase. So this is really focused on making the reality of your business processes translate into your technology or technologies that you might be deploying. Now once the software has been built, now it's time to test the software to make sure it works. And there's actually a few different phases or a few different iterations of the testing cycle. First of all, you have more of the technical or what they often call unit testing. And that is focused on making sure that the technology itself works. So if you're looking at a microcosm of the overall technology, a certain business process or a certain function within the technology, you're making sure that that individual function works. And when I say work, I mean it works from a technical perspective. You've configured it the way it needs to be configured. Data is flowing through that one part of the system the way it should be. And that part of the software is, is working from a technical perspective. The next phase of testing is typically called integration testing. And this is where you take the individual pieces that have been tested within the technology. Now you're tying it all together and making sure that end to end, the workflows work and the data flows, the processes flow throughout the technology. And again, we're focused more on the technology itself, making sure that the software works from a technical perspective. But with integration testing, we're looking at it across end to end business processes rather than at individual functional processes. Now, not only are we looking at end-to-end -end business processes within integration testing, but we should also be integrating with other third-party systems that we might be tying our new technologies to. So for example, if you're deploying a new ERP system and you're keeping your, say, your human capital management system or your manufacturing execution system, you're going to have to tie those technologies together and you need to test to make sure that those integration points work and that the cycle of end-to-end -end processes that flow between systems is working from a technical perspective. So once that second phase of testing is complete, then you move into more of the business or user acceptance testing. And this is less focused on technology and more focused on making sure that the business needs are being addressed and that the business processes will work the way you need it to from a process perspective. So in other words, the technology might be working perfectly fine. You might have worked out all the bugs, all the kinks. Technically it's working, but it doesn't work for your business. You haven't considered certain needs or there's certain things within your business requirements that aren't being addressed. Those are the types of things that should come out during user acceptance testing, which by the way is oftentimes referred to as conference room pilots as well. So those are two terms to keep in mind. User acceptance testing, conference room pilots, they're oftentimes considered the same thing. And really what this is is more of a business simulation of what it would look like to use this technology within a production setting, but you're still testing it to make sure it all looks good and you're working out the kinks before you go live. So once you've done all these various iterations of testing, it's then time to get to the go live. So this is where you flip the switch, you turn on the new system, and you start using it in production. And one thing I'll mention is that before you get to go live, most organizations can or should have a go, no-go checklist or checkpoint. So it's a risk mitigation tool to make sure that you're really ready to go live. Because once you go live, oftentimes there's no going back. And once you go live, that's the moment of truth. Either the project is going to be successful and production is going to be fairly seamless or you're going to have some sort of disruption at the time of go live and obviously we're trying to avoid that. So you want to have a checkpoint prior to go live to make sure you've worked through all the risks or that you've at least considered all the risks of going live because going live is a risky proposition no matter how good of a team you have. You want to make sure you've got the right process in place and that you're actually ready. 
So once you go live, that's where you flip the switch, you start using the new technology. Typically, you're turning off the old technologies at this point, and typically at this point, you're starting to use the new production environment. And what we do after that is what I'll talk about in the next phase. Now, the final step in this whole process of implementation is post go live. A lot of organizations think they're done once they hit go live. They flip the switch, they, they move on to the next thing. Well, the reality is that's not true for a couple of reasons. One is because, first of all, a lot of organizations fail miserably in the go lives and they end up in total chaos and they end up needing to fix the problems they've created to go live. Now, hopefully that won't be the case for you. And even if it's not the case for you, there's gonna be some instability, some turmoil that happens at the point of go live. And at the very least, there's gonna be some opportunity to improve and optimize what you've done. So post go live is often thought about as both a stabilization phase where you're stabilizing to make sure you've worked through the kinks. People that don't understand the new system or are having trouble with the new system, they're being trained or retrained to sort of calm things down and get things back to normal. But even beyond that, you're looking to the next phase or sub phase of post go live, which is optimization of business benefits. How do we make sure we're not just avoiding disruption to our operations, but how are we getting real business value and maximum business value out of this investment we just made? And this phase right here is really important and it's overlooked oftentimes because oftentimes people, when they get to go live, they're so ready to be done with the project, they just wanna move back to their day jobs. But you look at all the time and money you've spent leading up to this point, and if you just spend that little bit of extra time to optimize business benefits and make sure you're getting the business value, the ROI on that activity is huge. So you wanna make sure that you're optimizing and getting the full business value as part of your go live. Now these are the seven major phases of any sort of implementation. You can kind of view this as a sequential series of activities that happen throughout implementation, but there's other activities that are happening in parallel with those seven tasks that I haven't talked about yet. For example, and first of all, project governance. Making sure you've got project governance, project controls in place, to ensure that all these phases are being executed the way they should be, making sure you're staying in scope, staying on time, on budget, delivering the business value, bringing the right resources to the table at the right time. Those are all critical aspects of any sort of implementation. You also have risk mitigation and risk management. So risk management is something that you start on day one of your implementation. It's meant to proactively identify risks before they become a problem so that you can mitigate them and address them. And that's something that takes a lot of skill and a lot of art from people like outside consultants that specialize in ERP and enterprise software implementations, you need people that can anticipate what the problems are before they become real problems that you can't fix. And then finally, organizational change management. That's something that runs throughout the entire cycle in parallel. Change management should start as early as your software evaluation and selection process and should continue all the way through and beyond go live. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, deploying new technology is gonna be hardest on your people. That's gonna be the hardest part of your deployment regardless of what type of organization you are, it's the people side of the equation that is typically the hardest. So these are just a few tips to keep in mind as you go through these seven cycles, these seven major steps in your enterprise software implementation. But I've also included a number of links below that give you additional guidance and additional details around how to deploy new technology and how to embark on your digital transformation. So I encourage you to download some of those links I've included below. And I hope you found this information useful and I hope you have a great day.